I got the hair for Dale Hasselhoff, but I don't have the boobs to this. <laughs> or the, the shorts, I need my junk to just go flopping out as I run. Yeah, we know you girls like that too when you saw David running. <laughs> Why do you think they let you watch it, boys? Well, hello, everybody. My name's Glenn Hans. I've been doing comedy um, for about four months now. Started here in the Surf Club. Yeah, thank you. One class, thank you. Yes. You, move closer. No. But uh, I was I was back here with the guys, and, and they were teasing me the first time I went up and did it. And they sat there and said, hey, it's hard and it's got to last 20 minutes. And I said, well, my girlfriend tells me that every night, so I don't have to sit down. She still thinks it lasts 20 minutes. I wait till she's not looking to change the alarm clock. She still can't figure out why she gets to work 19 minutes early. Uh, she, she's a doll. But uh, while, while we're going at it, it, it the dirty talk just blows my mind though. I, mean, I can't do it. She keeps calling me this God guy, and I'm sitting there, what do you want me to say? You all blessed. Pop those water off and never be down. Yeah, yeah. Some people are going, uh huh. God jokes, you can't do that. But, uh, <laughs> But, but no, it, it's great. Um, I live with her now, and right now it's not as scary as it was when we first started, you know, hanging out in each other's houses and stuff. Have you guys ever been in a woman's shower? No? Everybody's like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> that's that. It's private. It's private. Yeah. Hey, but yeah, no, women's shower, that's scary shit. Yeah. You ever looked in there? They got stuff everywhere. For everything. Yeah, I woke up one morning and I was like, crap, I gotta be working a little bit. I go running into her shower and I'm looking for the guy section. There's no guy section. It would kind of make me feel good because if I found a guy section, I would wonder. <laughs> You're like, I wasn't here before. Who's nothing is that in the dream? Who's nothing out? Hey, but I'm looking through this stuff and I'm like, what the hell is the shampoo? And they got stuff for the face and, and stuff for the legs and I didn't know what to do. So I just started rubbing it all on. I had a rash for three days. <laughs> Well, you gotta be careful when you get into that stuff, boy. But uh, also, also living with them, uh, you, you get a day job doing in the bathroom. You guys ever walk in the bathroom and just think, you know, something, there's an aura here. I feel something, you smell just, oh, beautiful flowers. Oh, I can smell the flowers, it's so terrific. There's candles burning and then you just smell something else. And you don't quite get what it is until you start going to the bathroom. And then you realize, you're like, oh, no way. That does not happen. Okay, because that's not the thing that guys want to think about as a girl on door. Ah! <laughs> Look at that one! That's the keeper. I'm not even going to wipe. I'm just going to leave that open stage for the next person to walk in on. I mean, if guys do that, hell, if we got a good one, we call all our friends. Dude, you got to get over here quick! Okay, I actually had one I went over to CSI and, and I went to the, I opened the stall and I walked in and there's this church in there and I was in awe. I like had to step back. I was like, Jesus Christ, I thought I was going to attack. <laughs> and then I, I looked back and it looked like I had eyes and it was just two little peanuts looking at me. <laughs> and I just sneak over and carefully flush and back away. And it starts flushing and it goes around and around and around and around and it's stuck. And it doesn't go down. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm not even messing with that. That is a keeper. I have a little caution sign as I walk away from it. Nobody's going there, let's no touch. Okay, but, uh, oh, I'm, I'm writing these down, and as I do good, I put stars by, and if I mess up, I'm going to screw that one. Okay, but, uh, I actually lost a girlfriend once over Mario Kart. You guys play Mario Kart? Yeah, hell yeah. Ah, uh, that thing caused so many problems in my life. I was gone so many times for cussing when I was a kid over that stupid game. And fight, you had to hit some of your Mario Kart. So what's gonna happen is you, you're driving along, you're in first place, and your friend is in freaking last place, shoots that purple shell up and smacks you. I'm like, ah! This is so annoying, isn't it? But I lost a girlfriend over this because I was I was sitting at her house and we were playing this and I got four buddies and it's a tight race. There's like one, two, three. Okay, and then she yells at me, hey, you need to come in here and help me clean up. And my response was, what am I playing again? That was the wrong response. 
the correct response would have been, be right there, honey. Okay, but she got irately mad and ended up biting a chunk out of my hair. And she just got a good old just hook on it. And so we broke up, and you know, I go through it in my mind every single day, and I sit there, I'm like, what would I have done different in that situation? And I, I think to myself, I would have shot that freaking purple shell right at the first place. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Okay, mark that one off. So we'll Hell no. Yeah. No, my, my family, I grew up here in good old Glens Ferry, Idaho. Anybody been through there? Yeah, everybody else did in woo bleach while they were going by. There was a town there. I graduated with 26, almost like Liz, okay? We got, what, three times his name? Woo woo! Come on back away from this side of the stage. But no, I, I grew up in one and my dad uh, was kind of a jokester. And he always, always played tricks on me. And I, to this day, I can't trust any, anything from what anyone says because I never know if they're lying or not. He told me that Cinco de Mayo was celebrated because the Spanish were sending mayonnaise over to, the, to, to Mexico. <laughs> and that they sunk the ship and they were saying, yeah, Cinco de Mayo! <laughs> so I go to school, I'm like, what's up with the machetes? I don't know, just Cinco de Mayo or... Or like, when you drive, you guys ever drive down the freeway and your parents gonna tell you, catch the thing before it falls on your head every other pass, you go, don't kill me. <laughs> I don't want to die. Put your feet on the road, try to get run over. <laughs> Hold your breath over the bridge. Please. <laughs> you can never make it over the bridge. They take the longest one, too. It can't be like a little three-foot bridge. It has to be a mile long. Hold your breath, you're gonna die. <laughs> But the, my favorite one that they always play on me is, I grew up LDS. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> what do we see now? <laughs> okay, but now I grew up LDS. And so um, they told me that coffee was illegal for anyone under the age of 18. And so I go into the mini and I'm sitting there like, yeah. So I uh, got my ID and my time to go get a cappuccino, is that cool? <laughs> like, what? You know, I, I just don't have my ID, I just wonder if I can get it just this once. Is that cool? You get the cappuccino and you see a woman on crack. Can you get the cup? 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 Fun stuff, Mormons on caffeine. Okay. But, uh, you know, I don't think I could ever be single again because I, I would never be able to go to dance clubs ever again because I'd be that freaking creepy guy on the side who doesn't know. Okay, we, we, we form a circle, just a circle of creepy guys standing around the edge. And okay? they're all just staring at the group of women in the middle. And, and everyone's afraid to go in that group because you know exactly what's going to happen when you go in there. You're going to get tore up. Hey, those women, if they're not just booty dancing all over you, and bam, hits the moon, you're like, I don't even know where that's going. Okay, I need this for later. I don't want to ruin it right now or get it grinded down to nothing. <laughs> but, and, and women got signals, too. They are organized men. We call each other up, hey, what do you want to do? I don't know. Under the club? Sure. Women are like, let's call all the girls. The next Saturday, we're about to go out. We're going to have fun. And then you get out there. And they're dancing, right? And they're out there just having a hell of a time. And the guy comes up to them and he just goes, Is it cute? And then the other girl just goes, Oh. You can't off me! And then they're like, We're just getting them off. And then she's just attacked. Like you see four other girls just nonchalantly go there, BAM! And you're just like, Right there! Hey man, if they do get the good signal, who is cute? Hell yeah, yeah. Then there's that one bitch comes up, we got to go. <laughs> we have got to leave right now. Mm -hmm. you no, know, my ex-boyfriend just walked in, she is going down, we're leaving. And that guy's like, no man. Goes back to the crowd with the guys, and I'll get the next one. I'll get the next one. We're going to 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 get
Hey, football's got nothing on dancing. <laughs> Because we're going to put this on your report card and later next time you come to dance with me, show it and then we'll dance, okay? <laughs> oh no, but women, I love women to that. I don't think I could ever live without you gals. I mean, that would be a boring world, wouldn't it? Hey, nothing would ever get done. <laughs> I have to build you up because I'm going to put it down in a second. So, guys, <laughs> no, but I, uh, I like cheerleaders. Nobody gets all the guys you don't do my wife's right here. <laughs> I'm not moving into that. No, but I, I actually was a cheerleader in high school. And, yeah, I got one good little time to say, Yeah, you're gay! That was probably the best straight move I've ever made in my life. I got to go to cheerleading camp with 300 girls. And they all had these like little dances that I didn't know girls had. And guys, if you don't know this, they have secret dances. My baggage, my brocky, got my hip kick, and that's too right on the road. Right? 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 Ready? Okay, my daddy! Get me! And my goodness, they're awesome! They do this for college, too. They don't give me a purse. Oh, good, you're really good. Thanks for coming out. But I do, I do have to give it to the girls. People want to see the girls or not. Hey, I already tell my friends, you want to hear a joke when it's right? Just two? No. I'm going to stand in the corner for this show. No, but I mean, a girl, they look at my girlfriend tells me all the time, you need to open the door for me when you go out. You need to open the door and let me in the car and hold my hand and we're going to walk down and skip daily through the hall. <laughs> and I go, woman, you lost. That was the right to vote. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, that didn't go over well either, but I still have a full head of hair. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't as bad. No, but I mean, it, it, I think to myself, women won their road right to vote by hula hooping, taking off their bras, and, and doing jumping jacks. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what kind of guy gives in to that? Pussy? Now let me get this straight. You're going to take off your bra, swivel your hips around and jump. Okay? That sounds like a Saturday night to me. No? I don't know that one. Oh, but, um, you guys ever run into telemarketers? God, they start calling your cell phones now. Pastor! I got that for a reason. Ruining my minutes talking to you guys, but I make it fun for myself. And I make it so they never call back, because you always do that. We'll take me off the list, and they're like, oh yeah, we'll take you off the list, and then they call you the next day. Assholes. Hey, but my favorite thing to do is when they call, they're like, we're trying to sell you a baby straight jacket for 1999. <laughs> I like to pick up the phone and go, oh. <laughs> Two payments, sir. Oh. We just talked to that again. We had a mama coming up there. I just want to make babies for sure. What tough pants are you wearing? And you know, it's the same. And it worked for a little while until I got this guy picked up that said, it's red flannel on you know what I'm And I'm like, fuck you! <laughs> I had to get my phone number changed after that one. <laughs> but I get, I get rid of Jehovah's Witnesses too. You guys ever have more than just Jehovah's Witnesses not on your door? Yeah, we got one class to go, oh hell yeah! <laughs> hell yeah! Okay, and the difference, the biggest difference is Mormons, they don't, they give up to me. We'll, we walk up to the door and knock, tick, tick, tick. Oh, no, hey, we'd like to be book Mormon. All right, I'll get my pants and buy school over the next one. <laughs> hey, but Jehovah's Witnesses, uh-uh, they research you. And they're like, okay, they're going to be home from 3 to 5 and we're going to knock on the door and stand there for two hours until they come out. And I'll, tick, tick, tick. I'll walk out there and mess up my hair. And I'll take my hair out and go, 
Hello. <laughs> How are you? We like to bring the word of God to you. I just said, it. Yes, who is the Ouija board? <laughs> Come right in. And I said to them away, they don't enjoy the devil speaking. <laughs> but I always do wonder to myself, what's heaven like? Because I'm thinking, if hell is really, really warm, and heaven is the exact opposite, I want to go to hell, because that's freaking cold. I don't want to go to that heavy thing and I'm going, Jesus Christ, when is this going to be done? I'm like, come on, hurry it up. You know what we did, just say yes or no, let's get it over with. Besides, all my good friends are going to hell. And I don't have any company going up to heaven. And I'm kind of lonely. We go mosey on over to the lesbian cloud. Just kind of tease myself a little bit, they don't really care. And you could jump in the jello pool. That would be the only reason I'd want to go is if they had a jello pool. <laughs> Jumping in that thing. But lesbian, oh my goodness, do I love lesbian. <laughs> but don't ruin it for me. Hey, I had a friend try to tell me that I just had a secure version of lesbian. I said, yes, I do. Hey, I think the lesbians are two hot, double D sized, blonde haired college girls experimenting. Hey, I don't want to think about the other half. I don't want to think about Rosie O'Donnell and Ella DeGeneres hooking it up. That's not what I want going through my mind when I'm thinking about lesbians. Hey, and I, you know, I, I got a bunch of lesbian friends, a bunch of gay friends, cool with that. Hey, and it's always good to actually have a gay buddy with you while you're clubbing. Hey, for boys and girls. Hey, for guys, the reason why is because for some odd reason they attract every single hot woman in the room. I'm so cute! Damn! <laughs> I'm like, yeah, my buddy. Hey, I take off the weak one. <laughs> hey, but, and also, when, when you get a little too drunk, you go, oh, yeah, she is looking good. That's not a shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they got your back. And then they want to take the woman out from underneath you. It's awesome. Hey, but, uh, but speaking of heaven and hell, how do you guys like Idaho? <laughs> Not that I don't like Idaho, I'm afraid to live anywhere else. There's weird people out there. I'm used to our weird. <laughs> and I'm okay with crazy Idaho people, because I'm one of them. Hell yeah. Hey, but I, I, I don't like the weather, though. The weather guys may not tell you guys like the nice little storm that just kicked in. Hey, God must have been pissed when we got Idaho. And having a bad day or something. The ocean isn't going right. It's covering 70% of the world, and I can't get it to go. And somebody probably suggested, well, you, you need to release your anger. He says, all right, you know what I want to do? I'm going to make a place where the weather's always shit. <laughs> and you can never guess what it's going to do. And you know what I'm going to do just for kicks and needles? I'm going to make it look like a hatchet. <laughs> and when it's coming out, it's going to be just chopping shit up. Okay? And then somebody's like, you can't just make it this crappy place to live. you got to make it famous or something. Potatoes! Why don't I give up potatoes? Thank you for that. Okay, and like, she's like, Jesus, use a hoe. Idaho? Yes, that's a person. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who that was. But, um, I'm going to tell you a story really quick about when I was at U of I. Is there any Vandal fans in here? Yeah! Woo! Thank you. Yeah, any BFC fans? Woo! Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm actually at BFC right now. I went up to U of I, drank myself out of college, <laughs> went to CSI, stayed there for way too damn long, and they tried to take my ass out. So now I'm like, well, I'll go to PSC for shit and giggles. Okay, I completely forgot what I was going to do. <laughs> right, my U of I story. Hey, this is one of my few U of I stories that doesn't start with, well, we were hammered. <laughs> hey, but I was actually walking home from class, which is a rarity as it is, to make it all the more better. I'm walking home from class, and I got my book, and I'm moving on up to my frat house. And I stop, and I see this squirrel. And this squirrel is, I mean, it's like there's squirrels everywhere, but this squirrel was like, it's on. It has a book. It's, it's sitting there nibbling at its nice little acorn. And, and, and I stop. And, and we have this little, and I close it. And I 
he's going to sit down in the corner. And he makes the person move out and he's BAM! Ah! And everyone laughs, this is scary! You know pissed off one of those guys? Just, ah! God, it's like an angry midget, just it's small, but it's scary! And so it hits him, and I backed up, and I was like, look out, I'm going to uh, chase after this thing. And so it got scared, and it turned and ran into my frat house, and I'm like, perfect, lock the door. Okay, but then I didn't realize that this thing is small and can hide anywhere. And so I go and I lock all the doors in the frat house, and I'm like searching through this, I feel like I'm in a scary movie. And I was like, hey, this is the perfect time to have a lock time, because he get killed first. <laughs> Okay, and I find this thing jumps out of this matrix hit, and it just goes right past my head, and it Jackie Chan's his ass off the wall. Okay, and thank goodness for Darwinism, because this stupid thing saw a window. Thought it was open, bam, that was still found. Like, the victory is mine. So I put it in the box, threw it in my roommate's closet, and waited until he opened that again. <laughs> I don't want to feel like the only pansy afraid of a squirrel. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that's something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Like, it, it, there, there's a lot of things you remember forever. Like the first time I got pimped out. Has you ever been pimped out? No? Go to Boise. You get pimped out every day. Yeah, I just finished doing the 7.3 Iron Man, and so I'm hot. And I like when I'm slowing down, I'm limping. And my girlfriend goes to get your car and pulls it up. And so I lay down on the grass, and I'm like, I'm going to die. Yeah, I can barely move, and this guy comes up to me, and he's like, hey, are you doing okay? And I thought to myself, I thought, wow, what a nice human being. And what a nice guy here in Boise, Idaho, checking to see if I'm on the ground and I'm okay. And so then I'm like, no, no, I am totally fine. I am okay. Thank you for asking. And so he looked at me, and he said, would you need a nice woman to keep you warm? And I looked at her and said, no, no, thank you, though. My girlfriend is coming. She's like, oh, no, we'll get you in that woman. And I'm going to tell you, hey, Candy! Candy, come here. Let me introduce you to my boy. And I'm laying on the ground going, shit. I can't fight her off. I'm going to get raped and then charged for it. <laughs> Try explaining that to your girlfriend. Hi, I'm trying. I'm sorry. Oh, but, you know, the other story... I'm going to leave you with a, a last story here of the first time I saw Fong. Okay, this is the most memorable moment of my entire life. I was at a basketball game, one that I wasn't in. And I'm a little 16-year-old boy sitting down in the bleachers, go team! Sitting back and I'm being nice little good old boy, right? And so this ball goes flying up in front of the bleachers in front of me. And this girl leans over. And I'm attracted to this bright pink aura. Okay, and I'm looking at this beautiful little triangle, hanging in a string. And I let the string go, where are you going? <laughs> okay, and all my buddies are going, look away, look away, I'm like, yeah, this is so pretty. <laughs> and I can feel her eyes burning at me, and I can just feel the aura of everybody just trying to pull me away from her, but that was totally worth the slap across the face. What a wonderful memory to have. But I'm Glenn Ham. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night. We're going to turn back on Mr. John here for a second.